Ecuador. A gorgeous country with breathtaking nature, scenery, volcanoes, hikes, and vistas. But do you always have to travel in a group in Ecuador? Are coastal areas too risky? Can you go out and do anything in Ecuador? Yes, in general you can go out and do things in Ecuador, but we have some things we want to chat with you about in regards to safety and security when traveling in Ecuador. Ask yourself this, is the USA safe? In general, yes, the USA is a safe country, but there would be cities, LA, New York, Miami, and areas in those cities and things to know before you go. Stay tuned because at the end of the video, we're going to talk to you about the crime rates and common scams to watch out for when traveling in Ecuador. We have five or six things we want to talk to you about today based on our experiences living in Ecuador for the last six months. The first one is street crime and petty theft. Yes, this happens in every major city or larger town in Ecuador. We're just telling you, it does happen. Common sense will keep you safe maybe 99% of the time, in our opinion. Yeah, that's a high number, but the majority of the time. But, but using common sense will make you at least aware of some of these things, what to do and not to do. There's a saying, keep calm and no dar papaya. This means don't give papaya, literally. It's a Colombian and Ecuadorian term, meaning don't put yourself in a position where people can easily take advantage of you. It's kind of like an 11th commandment. If you were to put a plate of papaya out for your Colombian or Ecuadorian friends, it generally disappears within a few minutes. And so the term really means don't give opportunity. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to say it as don't show them your papayas. I think it's a funner twist. <laughs> Another point we want to mention is about buses and taxis and driving yourself in Ecuador. So there are longer haul buses that travel across country and then smaller city buses. A general rule on all of these buses is don't fall asleep if you can help it. Or if you're in a pair or partnership like Air and I, one of us would fall asleep and the other one would do everything we could to stay awake to keep our eyes on our stuff. Another rule of thumb is to not use the overhead racks in the big buses unless it's food or something not valuable to you. If it's valuable in any way and in a small backpack or carry-on bag, it needs to be on your lap at all times. And we were recommended to not even put our valuable bags on the floor for risk of someone coming underneath the seats potentially to slice it or take it. So always on your lap. The city buses we would say are generally safe in all the little towns and cities that we traveled through. We took those everywhere, but we do not recommend taking the city buses in Guayaquil, especially during peak hours. We did not spend more than one day in Guayaquil. We only passed through via bus, but if we did spend more time there, we would not take any buses there. We would take a taxi everywhere. One point we want to mention is about a money belt. We travel with one in the last few years. We super recommend it. Air wears it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's discreet, flat, not easily taken, and we'll link it below. As far as taxis go, you only want to use an official taxi and never hail your own taxi on the streets. Another way to proceed with the taxi situation in Ecuador is to ask a friend or the hotel where you're staying for their trusted drivers. Get one or two phone numbers that you can rely on and call them to meet you at a certain time and place to pick you up and drop you off. Alternatively, using apps like Cabify or Uber are awesome. We recommend it and we use those the most. As far as driving a personal vehicle in Ecuador, this is what we found. We chose not to do that because when we researched ahead of time, it, we were encouraged or it was recommended for us not to try to drive ourselves. After spending six months in Ecuador, we can confidently say driving our own vehicle there would have been a terrible idea. The level of police road checks there were probably 10 to one over Mexico. And it was just seemed like it would be a constant scenario of being harassed and shaken mm -hmm. down by less than a savory policeman there might be some corruption there so we just skipped all that and the buses and taxis turned out well for us if way, you want to drive there good luck yeah way we, better we skipped it the buses were way less stressful for us and way way inexpensive very good option yeah so this leads us into our next point that we want to talk about is protests and road closures they happen in ecuador all the time but they are generally peaceful protests and non-violent they are disruptive and annoying. I mean, it's hard to get places, hard to get 
stuff like supplies, gasoline, or food. Most people, locals and expats who live there permanently, just stay home until the protests are over. Um, but you know, that's the point of the protest. A person could just take the time to listen to the people, learn the reasons behind the protests. They are usually quite interesting and educational. And usually, generally speaking, these folks are protesting just to get the basics of uh, quality of life that you and I all take for granted. So that's why they're protesting. They're not trying to get luxuries. They're just trying to get the basics. So to sum up the protests and the road blockages, those, those are usually non-dangerous. But you kind of want to just avoid them if you can. They're kind of annoying. All right, well, we thought we would talk to you about some of the safest places in Ecuador, medium safe, and the riskiest places in Ecuador. We traveled all the way from Quito, through the middle of the country, coastal, down south in Loja, back up again. So we did move around and experience these places for ourselves. Some of the safest locations that we traveled to, lived in, or heard about are Baños, Cuenca, Salinas, and Vilcabamba. And this would be a generality. You'll still find troubles uh, after hours. I, we would say between about 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. you're pretty well safe. You, I could go somewhere on my own and I would feel okay in most uh, areas there. These places also have lots of tourists and a really healthy expat community. But it's important to note that dangers exist in all of these places. It's not without dangers. So you should still yeah. have your usual cautions and street sense. Absolutely. So some sort of mid mid range safety would be Quito. Again, some areas were just wonderful. You could walk at night, but we were cautioned on every corner and every restaurant we went to, to be careful here, be careful there. Uh, some other mid range cities, because they're larger, you would just want to have your wits about you are Manta and Loja. You can go online to learn about safer areas within these cities and use that common sense. So some of the riskiest zones are the city of Guayaquil and the town and the whole area of Esmeraldas and then the border of Ecuador with Colombia. These are definitely places you would not want to go out at night, not even in groups is what we heard, and especially not as a solo female traveler. Overall, Ecuadorians are really gentle people. They have a culture of friendliness and politeness and they're very humble in their speech. You can hear it in words like cafecito, poquitito, momentito, mijita. We'll put the translations at the bottom of the screen, but they talk very, very delicately and politely and they don't want to ruffle any feathers. There are people who don't get mad. And so 95 or more percent of people you meet, you're going to love and get on with just fine. But you know, it's this 5% of people who use this to their advantage. And we want to talk to you a little bit about crime rate and the common scams found in Ecuador. Here are some valuable websites that you can do more reading on yourself, whether you're from the USA, UK, or Canada. And we will link some of these websites in our description below. If you go to numbio.com, you have a few different tabs that you can read through for your area of interest. Right now we're gonna talk about crime. So I'm gonna check crime off on the list. I'm gonna type in Ecuador. And you can see that there's quite a few cities that come up. Let's just choose Cuenca. It's very popular with expats considered relatively safe. And what you do is you can scroll down here and see all the different levels of crime or other things that can happen to you, moderate, high, and low. And right here is really beautiful. Type in another city in Ecuador. Let's try Guayaquil. Now, if you scroll down, you can get a comparison here between Cuenca and Guayaquil, for instance, and look at the difference. So that could just help you. It's not a scare factor or a fear factor, but the realities are real, that there are petty crimes and different things that occur in Ecuador. And this will just help you um, assess your level of caution required for your type of lifestyle and where you're going. So numio.com and compare for yourself. Some more handy websites that I'll show you here and it doesn't really matter where you're from, all these websites give you really good and helpful information. So use any or all of them at your discretion. But let's say you're British, you would go to gov.uk. The resource for the USA would be travel.state.gov. For a Canadian website and information, you would go to travel.gc.ca forward slash traveling advisories. Add your destination. And again, you can read th through all the Government of Canada travel advisories scams here are some common scams to maybe just be aware about the first one is the friendly stranger scam this is where someone may come up and ask if you need any help do you need directions and then they're distracting you and a, a partner or a colleague comes in and takes a bag or a cell phone so just be aware of that one another one we heard about 
was the spilled condiment scam. Someone spills something next to you and they're genuinely concerned, did they get any of it on you? And again, the, the accomplice comes in from the side and takes something valuable of yours. One last thing to be aware about is people being overly generous and offering you a drink or a cigarette. We talk a little bit more about this in just a minute. Please note though, keep in mind that generally speaking, the folks that we encountered in Ecuador were friendly, overly helpful, generous. So just because there yeah. being any of those things doesn't 100% mean it's a scam. In fact, it's quite the opposite of that. Yeah. Most of the time, what you see is what you get with the people in Ecuador. So. Yeah. It's going to be good luck to you to try to figure out that one time or those five times out of a hundred where they're projecting friendliness, but they're actually trying to scam you. We're letting you know so that you can be aware of it, but we certainly don't have the answers on how to pick that out because most yeah. people were great. It's just being aware. We can remember circumstances where an air and I would be out and about and people were overly friendly, but in the back of our mind, we were still watching our bags. So it's, it's just being aware and keeping your wits about you in public. Yeah. So air and I do have advice for you after having lived in Ecuador for the full six months. Again, luckily, and thank God we didn't experience any of these things. And we hope it's because A, our lifestyle and interests are low risk. We'll link you to our hummingbird videos below. And B, we kept all of this in mind when choosing rental apartments, areas in the cities, where to rent and live, and when traveling or going out. One, don't walk at night. Take a cab to and from wherever it is you want to go, especially after dark. Two, don't accept those drinks or cigarettes from strangers. You don't know what can actually be put on them, and there are things in Ecuador that can be used. Mm -hmm. Number three, watch your belongings, if they matter to you, at all times. Number four, carry only copies of your documents with you and not the originals. Number five, when traveling on buses, all your very larger bags should go down below in the out outdoor carriage area, and all your smaller bags, if valuable to you, should be on your lap. Number six is, we did all of our own sightseeing on our own, but one extra measure of safety for you, if you need it, would be to hire a driver or someone trusted or recommended in a Facebook group, let's say, for that added bit of security. They know the safe and unsafe areas to go and not go. So we do encourage you to go see some of the out of the way and some of the touristy destinations that Ecuador has to offer, like this one. Do you like that or should I say it in a different way? I love way? it. <laughs> I love that one. I love the other one too. Ecuador. I'm just a trophy husband for this video.